and to doing this. And they begin to tell us at these gatherings, they said, in your lifetime you're going to see things happen. It was strange when they said it in the 1950s and 1960s, but now it seems very clear, but then it was unusual. They said, you're going to see a time in your life men are going to become women. They said, the Great Spirit, he's going to make a man on the earth. He made him a man, but this man's going to say, I know more than the Great Spirit. I'm going to change myself to be a woman. And they will even nurse children. They said, the Great Spirit's going to make a woman on this earth. She's going to say, I know more than the Great Spirit. I want to be a man. And she will be physically a man. This sounded strange. And maybe in the illusion they saw Boy George. I don't know. <laughs> they said, you're going to see a time in your lifetime. The human beings are going to find the blueprint that makes us. They're going to find the blueprint that makes us. They call that now DNA, dionucleic acid. And they said they're going to cut this blueprint. They call that now genetic splicing. And they said they're going to make new animals upon the earth. And they're going to think these are going to help us. And it's going to seem like they do help us. But maybe the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they're going to suffer. I don't know if you heard on the news last month in the United States now, they have genetically spliced a new germ never before released in the environment. They want to release this germ into the cotton fields of the South to, they say it will rejuvenate and strengthen the cotton. They had scientists on the CBS Evening News the other night talking about it, and one scientist, he said what the elders said in 1950. He says, this will not harm us. We put it in a lot of tests. And the other scientist, he said what the other elders, he said what the elders also said. He said, no. This has never before been in the environment. We have no idea what it would do. But the elders spoke of it long ago. They said it would seem harmless, but it may be it will hurt the great-grandchildren. The elders said long ago, they will release these things. They will use them. This is going to be released not too long from now. They are making new animals. The elders talked about this. They said, you will see new animals, and even the old animals will come back. Animals that people thought had disappeared, they will find them here and there. They begin to reappear. They said, you'll see a time, about this time, they said, there's going to be a time, and I know that many of you are from tribes that also have this prophecy. They said, there's going to be a time when the eagle will fly its highest in the night and it will land upon the moon. Some tribes say the eagle will circle the moon. Some tribes say the eagle will fly its highest in the night. And at that time, they say, many of the native people will be sleeping, which symbolically means they have lost their teachings. Or some tribes say it will be as if they're frozen, they've been through the long winter. But they say when the eagle flies its highest in the night, that will be the first light of a new day. That will be the first thawing of spring. Of course, at the first light of a new day, if you stayed up all night, you notice it's really dark. And the first light, you want to see it, but you can't. It sneaks up on you. You want to see it change, but it was dark, and then pretty soon it's getting light before you know it. Well, at that time now, the eagle has landed on the moon, 1969. When that spaceship landed, they sent back the message, the eagle has landed. Traditional Navy people from the, from clear up in the Inuit that have shared with us they had this prophecy, clear down to the Quechua's in South America who have shared with us they had this prophecy. When they heard those first words, the eagle has landed, they knew that was the start of a new time and a new power for Navy people. There is absolutely nothing strong before us now. We may do anything we wish. In 1776, when the United States government printed the dollar in one claw, if you've ever noticed, there's an olive branch in this claw. They said that represented peace. The Indian elders shared with me in South Dakota, where Kevin's from, that then that represents the enslavement of black people. In the prophecies of the Six Nations people, they say there will be two great uprisings by black people to free themselves. We've seen one about 1964. There will be a second more violent one to come. 
That's, I'll get back to what that means in a minute. In the other clause, 13 arrows. The founding fathers of the United States said that represents the 13 states. But they say the elders, that represents the enslavement of native people. When the eagle landed on the moon, they decided to print a special silver dollar to commemorate that. I don't know how many of you noticed it. The original design showed the spaceship landing on the moon, but at the last minute it was changed to an actual eagle. And in the eagle's claws is the olive branch, but the arrows are gone. And the elders said, that's our prophecy. We have been released. There was one more uprising coming for the black race of people, and then they will be released. And this is also going to have an effect on native people, a good effect. And there's a whole other set of prophecies from the Iroquois people about that, but I won't have time to go into this morning. But we're in that time now. We're between the first light of a new day and the sunrise. The sunrise is about to come. When it comes up, everyone is going to see it. But you know how it is in the village. There's a few people that get up early, and there's some that sleep till noon. I'm probably one of those that sleeps till noon. <laughs> And he said, when that eagle lands on the moon, the powers will begin to come back to us. And you know, as an alcoholic person, I feel that one of our greatest diseases is alcoholism. And within seven days of the time the eagle landed on the moon, the first native alcoholism program was started on an Apache reservation in Arizona. Within seven days of the time the eagle landed on the moon, the Freedom of Indian Religion Act was introduced into the United States Congress. Eventually it was passed on November in, anyway, in 1978, it was signed by President Carter, I believe it was November 10th, making the song that Kevin sang legal to sing in every state of the United States. It was punishable at one time to go to jail for 10 years and or a $10,000 fine for singing a song or doing a sweat. This was changed in 1978. The legislation was introduced in 1969, less than seven days after the eagle landed on the moon. These are the physical manifestations of the spiritual prophecies that we have. So he said at this time you're going to see things will speed up. The people on the earth will move faster and faster. Grandchildren will not have time for grandparents. Parents will not have time for children. It will seem like time is going faster and faster and the elders advise us, as things speed up, you yourself should slow down. The faster things go, the slower you go. Because there's going to come a time when the earth is going to be shaken a third time. The great spirit has been shaking the earth two times, the first and second world wars, to remind us that we are a human family, to remind us that we should have greeted each other as brothers and sisters. We had a chance after each shaking to come together in a circle that would have brought peace on earth. But we missed that. Last night they were talking on the news about the sign for the third shaking of the earth. I heard it sitting in the airport after I missed my plane. They said they're going to build what the elders called the house in the sky. In the 1950s they talked about this. They will build a house and throw it into the sky. When you see people living in the sky on a permanent basis, you will know the Great Spirit is about to grab the earth. This time not with one hand, but with both hands. Many of you of native background may have heard, the spirits will warn you twice, but the third time you stand alone. We've had two warnings, the first two world wars, but now we stand alone in the third one. As it says in the Baha'i writings, there will be no one protected. When this house is in the sky, the great spirit's going to shake the earth a third time, and whoever dropped that gourd of ashes upon them, it's going to drop. They say at that time there will be villages in this land so great that when you stand in these villages, you will not be able to see out. And in the prophecies, these were called villages of stone, or prairies of, prairies of stone. And they said the stone will grow up from the ground, and you will not be able to see beyond the village. And at the center of each and every one of these villages, there will be native people, and they will walk as hollow shells upon a prairie of stone. They said hollow shells, this means they will have lost many of their traditional understandings. They will be empty within. They said after the eagle lands on the moon, some of these people will begin to leave these prairies of stone and come home and take